My name is Charles Sprung. Most of my friends and family call me Charlie. I was born September 4th, 1949. I'm the son of Miriam and Milton Sprung. My mother Miriam was the daughter of Sophie and Louis Rubin. And my father Milton was the son of Charles and Sophie Sprung. Uh, I had a younger brother, Barry, who was three years younger than me, and a sister, Helene, who was about nine and a half years younger. And we grew up in Brooklyn. Um, I learned a lot of things from my father. The one thing he taught me when I remember that first time he took me around was shaking hands. Uh, and when we were shaking hands, he says, when you shake hands with someone, don't just shake hands. Give, put your hand all the way in. Uh, get a good grasp of the person's hand and when you're shaking hands you don't want them to think you're a fish uh, shaking hands with a fish. Another important lesson I learned from my father was giving stucco. Uh, they would always have uh, donations announced in shul and my father would always give anonymously and uh, I still to this day always give anonymously. Uh, I guess uh, it's the way of the Rambam and uh, my father but uh, I guess it's a good way to give stucco. My mother uh, was a rock, uh, was always there for the kids, um, and I think one of the most telling stories she ever told all her kids, and I tell to my kids and grandkids, is when you choose a profession, when you choose what you want to do for the rest of your life, pick something you really love, something you enjoy. Uh, and for me, as your mother, even if it means being a garbage man, if that's what makes you happy, that'll make me happy. And I don't think many Jewish mothers would really be happy with their sons as garbage men, but she really believed it. She was an unbelievable woman. Now my kids uh, know grandma, and even some of the great grandma, grandkids uh, know grandma, uh, because she used to come to Israel and she wanted to spend quality time with, with the grandkids. Uh, but I'm sure uh, my kids will tell the stories of grandma taking all of her grandkids on cruises, one to the Caribbean, one to uh, Bermuda, and uh, she really invested not only in the stock market, which she did pretty well with with my father, uh, but also with the family, and uh, our family is really uh, well-knit and, and close because of the investments both my parents made with their family. Now, growing up, family was a crucial uh, and most important part of, of our life, uh, many times, certainly on holidays, uh, we would get together. I remember Seder and my grandparents, the Rubens, um, and also uh, during the national holidays, Thanksgiving or, or whatever, we would spend time with our cousins, with our grandparents uh, and uncles and aunts. So family was certainly an important part of the Sprung family uh, and tradition. Now going to school, I, we lived in Brooklyn. I, uh, as I mentioned, my father thought it was important that we went to day schools. My mother obviously agreed. Uh, her family came from a religious family in Poland. Um, and I ended up initially going to Yeshiva Rambam in Brooklyn. But when we moved to New Jersey, I went to Yavna Academy, which was in Patterson. And subsequently went to Yeshiva University High School in Manhattan, MTA, and I ended up uh, uh, spending three years at Yeshiva University, uh, getting admitted to Downstate uh, after three years, uh, and went on to become a physician. Studying at Downstate, I ended up uh, thereafter uh, going to Kings County, which was the hospital affiliated with uh, the State University of New York Downstate, and trained in internal medicine, and after that, critical care, intensive care medicine, uh, Rebecca, my wife, who has always given me good advice, uh, thought I should become a dermatologist. I said I didn't want to become a doctor to pop pimples, I wanted to be a doctor to save lives. Now Rebecca had trepidations about leaving the family, but uh, she always, and she'll tell her story about uh, Zionism and wanting to make Aliyah. I was a Zionist, but certainly not a fervent Zionist like Rebecca, and I said, well, if you're really serious about making Aliyah, we're going to be away from our family, and the first step will be to be away from our family. So this is our first step to Aliyah to move to Miami, which we did. So I guess 
one of the next things I ought to speak about, and probably one of the most important things in my life, is how I met Rebecca and our courtship. Hi there. Whoa! <laughs> here I am, here to tell a story. My sister Helen, who's older than me by almost three years, and me, we were the two children. And, uh, and then when my brother came along four years later, Danny, we needed to move to a, new, a bigger house. I have two elementary school friends that are still friends with me today that I've taken along with me, Suri and Elliot. And um, from High Rock, uh, we, we, uh, there was no high school, so uh, we went by car every day to Manhattan, to Central Manhattan. Central was the YU High School for Girls, and uh, that turned out to be very formidable years for me where I've made some like, unbelievably lifelong friends, and of course along the way, happened to have met my husband. And throughout this whole time, from when I'm 16, because when I was 16, I was Oliver in the Oliver play. That's when Charlie started his courtship with me. And um, I on can honestly say that if one day he hadn't given up, we would not be married today. So I do agree with the first lesson that I've learned is that you need to be persistent. And no doesn't mean no. And uh, um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the better person for it because with the years, I have to say, if I had any doubts all those six years we were dating, 46 years later, I made the definite right choice. So that's the compliment you're getting So from did I. Okay. So my father was born in America um, to, uh, uh, and, and he was a, quite an unusual man, very soft-spoken, loved to do tzedakah, my father's main motto was, if you give, you get, and he lived his life that way. Um, interestingly, his father, who was widowed at an early age, uh, and he started, he was one of the founders of the Jay Levine Company from his father-in-law. Um, he had three sons and one daughter, and all three sons were made to go into the business. Actually, my father was a graduate of City College, but even he was told by his father, we need you in the business, and he went into the business. Now what happened was that um, my grandfather, Pop, my father's father, Yisrael Levine, uh, was a Zionist, and in 1949, he decided to make Aliyah. He left his whole family, the business, and he moved to Rehov Malachi 13, where he later married a, a widower, Miriam, and lived in Yushalayim in poverty, I would say. Went up to Hartzion every day, davening towards the Kotel, which he couldn't get to. He grew a big beard because he was a modern religious man when he moved to Israel. So I think my Zionist genes were, must have been in there. My father, being the American, always loved to come to Israel, and he spent several months here um, in 1949, right before his father made Aliyah, and he, we made a whole book for my father because he made, kept a diary about all the things. And my father always loved Israel, and, and I think his real dream was to move to Israel. Now, as opposed to my father, my mother was a refugee. My mother grew up in Czechoslovakia as a young girl on a farm, lived in a very small town of Svalova, and my grandfather, Mayor Dov Burma, Birnbaum, was a chazan and a shoichet. There was no work in this little town, so as... As luck had it, they moved to Berlin, where he became a rabbi and a shochet, and he saw the rise of Hitler. And that ultimately saved our lives, and it's why we're here today. But we did spend a lot of my childhood talking about Israel, because I had a grandfather there, and he used to come with his wife every summer. And my father, that was the other thing about my father, he was never on time. Remind me to go back to that, because that's one reason I married Charlie. Um, and, um, and part of the reason, really, was my father was always late, and when I was studying in uh, high school, he would we'd do, we'd do carpools, and my father, never mind that he was late picking me up, but all my friends, oh my gosh, I used to cry because I was like so embarrassed. So when I started dating Charlie, and he would say, I'll pick you up at 6 o'clock, my whole family would be sitting in the kitchen looking at the clock, and when the, when the second hand struck 12, the doorbell would ring. And that was always the joke in I my family. I was usually early. Or, right, because you stood in front of the door. You didn't want to come in earlier. But that was always the joke. 
But of course, you know, the, the things that we, we do when we're younger and, you know, sometimes Charlie hasn't changed. He's still always on time. But now I'm a little not so anxious to be so on time all the time. So, but I can't complain. Now I drive her crazy on. being right. on time. Right. In 1968, my parents sent me on a summer program to Israel, and that's when it happened. I came to Israel, and, and I felt like I was home. I can't describe it any other way or to anybody else except if you have it inside of you. You come here and you feel, oh, this is where I belong. And uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it. When I spend my sophomore year here, I said, I'll meet an Israeli. I'll get married, and that way I know I'll make Aliyah, because I knew it was going to be very hard for me to make Aliyah. So one of, I guess, my uh, characteristics is being persistent. Uh, and Excuse me, very persistent, not just persistent. And as I said, no doesn't necessarily mean no, so I saw certain things in Rebecca that I thought I should pursue, and I continued to pursue till she agreed to start going out. And we actually went out and went out and broke up and went out and broke up <laughs> and over a period of five years I was initially only 18 I was ready to be serious she was only 16 and I understand she needed more time I will never marry Charlie Sprung you know how many times I said that she said it to her mother her mother didn't believe it I because didn't. I kept giving her presents and her and to my friends and to her friends so Rebecca's motto now for her kids and grandkids. Never say never. And it's a good thing I didn't listen to my never. And then she came back and things were getting more serious and she had another friend who also wanted to get serious uh, with her and she had to make a decision to either marry me or this other boyfriend. Yeah. And thank God uh, Rebecca's sister is very, very wise and... <laughs> Helen uh, told her you should uh, marry Charlie, which she did, and I guess it's been uh, happy ever after. Mm. At least for my son. Good decision, good decision. And we got married on the condition that. And we got married on the condition that we make Aliyah, and as I said, I, I was willing to make Aliyah, but I was willing to pretty much do anything to marry Rebecca, and uh, it worked out well. So we were living in Miami, um, actually before we moved to Miami, uh, in New York during my training, uh, Ellie and Nina were born, but uh, when we moved to Miami, then, uh, Nina, then uh, Ari and Shana came, uh, and we had a wonderful family, it was great living in Miami, uh, the kids uh, were outdoors 12 months a year, the heat didn't bother them as much as it bothered us, but uh, it was a great life. And Israel was a special place for me. It was like coming home. Uh, but more importantly, being a physician and being able to save, take care of your own people was something very, very special. We had difficult times uh, during our times uh, in Israel. Uh, the first year we came uh, was the Gulf War. Uh, the kids were home, we had to go in the cheder atum, put on the gas masks. Uh, I found out that I was in charge of all the intensive care units for Hadassah, so while sometimes the kids were in the cheder atum with Rebecca, I would have to go in the middle of the night uh, during the sirens uh, to the hospital, spend time there. And then the intifada, which was a very, very difficult time for everyone. I was taking care of the patients uh, in the intensive care unit, that was uh, probably a lot easier because I was very, very busy not worrying about anything but taking care of my patients, whereas other people had to worry about what was really happening and about uh, their loved ones. But Israel was a, a great time. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, practicing medicine and I've been uh, privileged enough to be successful enough with my taking care of patients uh, my research, my publications, uh, to have been recognized not only by Hadassah and my institution, but also my colleagues uh, around the world, um, the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, where I was very active with, on the executive committee, became the treasurer, uh, but I was uh, given several uh, honors and uh, awards by the European Society uh, in uh, Israel also, but maybe Rebecca ought to speak a little bit more about those. Pleasure.
Okay, so uh, during our time in Miami, uh, which by the way, uh, we, we made up with our families that we would do Aliyah La Regel on Sukkot and Pesach to be with Charlie's family and my family, the cousins. My sister Helen and Danny and their kids and Barry and Helene and their kids, we, we split our time in New York. We always flew up to New York and um, spend the holidays. In fact, sometimes I came down to Miami towards the end for Pesach, but we had a lot of good family time. And then, lo and behold, again, I think we had uh, Hashkacha Pratit. Pratit, and unfortunately, a young doctor in Hadassah passed away. He was the head of anesthesia, and the head of the ICU wanted to become the head of anesthesia. And because they had known Charlie for Amar sabbatical, they offered him the job to come to Hadassah, run the ICU, and this was the best job we ever could have hoped for. It was the only job at the time that Charlie would have come back for, and it made our decision to make Aliyah pretty, pretty easy. Of course, then we went and we interviewed, I would say, our kids to see what their thoughts were. Now, Ellie was going to enter ninth grade, and he said, what, are you kidding? You're going to ruin my life. There's no way. I'm not going. All his friends were starting this new high school, and who could blame him? I mean, uh, it was that. Nina, on the other hand, being the free spirit she was, loved Israel. She says, oh, when can we go? She was ready. Ari, 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 in, in first grade, he was in, he, in Israel, not understanding Hebrew, but finally learning it on the, on the uh, soccer field. And so he learned a little Hebrew. He came back to America for second and third grade, and he didn't know English. So he said, Ma, I don't care where you live, but can you please make up your mind? And Shana was, a, was only three, so she didn't get asked. But my kids had certainly a big challenge. Uh, coming here in ninth grade was not an easy thing, and I, and I, 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 I remember going for counseling. I, I'm a very big believer, by the way, in counseling and professionals helping you when you have tough decisions. If you want to know why, besides my emotional attachment to Israel, of me feeling good here, I liked family lifestyle here. I liked that you're, when your kids are far, they're not a plane ride away, that you can drive there. I, I liked everything about uh, family life here. I liked the relationship between grandparents and children, which were much more natural, not, not staged. And um, there, were, there were many reasons and that I did it. less materialism, And too. of course, less materialism. And as you can see by the way we lead our lives, money was never a factor in how we... We, we, we lived our lives, and I have to say, Charlie's parents listened, and they, they were incredible. They said, okay, we accept that. Your reasons are valid, and we'll, you know, they didn't argue. They didn't make us feel guilty. They helped us buy our house, and I will be forever grateful for them because other people who made Aliyah had horror stories, and uh, we promised them at the time, don't worry. When you need us, we will be there, and I am so pleased to say that we did that throughout all the years that we lived here. Charlie was by his father's bedside more than his brother's brother and sister. Charlie even went to give a hesped at his grandmother's funeral. We were there. And I was there for every one of my mother's operations. Every operation. We, we gave them the kavod that we could have given them. Uh, so I'm very pleased about that. On the other hand, no one could have been happier than my father when we made Aliyah. Because although my mother was very... Uh, not anxious to move to Israel, he figured, oh, if I have a kid living there, I have a better chance of getting there. And as it turned out, he got his dream come true. Here, the kids do, I wish they didn't have to, but they do national service or the army. And each one of my kids had amazing army and shirut lumi that actually helped shape them into the people they are today. I must say my kids are all very accomplished today. And, and I can finally breathe a sigh of relief and when I'm taking stock of my life, I can look back and say, um, I think I did okay. You um, did great. Yeah. Through him, we met such fascinating people. I said they had such fascinating lives. And at the time, I thought my life is so boring. But now taking stock of my life, I didn't have a boring life. I certainly didn't take the easy way out. And I can say that I, I have really no regrets. I think I was very lucky. Now, my other thing I have to say is my guilt with bringing my children here was one thing, but I was also putting a stop on Charlie's career, and that was a very big concern. Charlie had three secretaries in Miami. He came here, 
and he was getting zero secretaries. He took, went to Ben Yehuda and he took a typing course, a ten-finger typing course, which turned out to be the best thing he ever did. It was before the age of... No, computers. the best thing was marrying you, dear. Okay. Out there, he made wonderful contacts and he became part of the European society and was able to do amazing things with his research. He was awarded prizes from the European society. I went to Berlin. It was a very, very moving trip for me. And watching Charlie stand up there with his keeper getting this big award was quite a moment for me. And um, he was awarded the Nefesh Benefesh Award for an Ole who made a very big contribution to Israel. And I can honestly say that coming to a small country, you can make a big difference. As opposed to in America, there are a lot of Charlie Sprungs in Israel. Charlie made his mark. But I think more than anything, what Charlie did in Israel was teaching doctors how to talk to families, making time, because there's a difference of, 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 of culture. And that's something Americans who move here can help to change some of that culture. Charlie took the families every day and sat with them. And I told him, Charlie, bring the young doctors in with you so they can see how you speak to your patients. Do you know, very occasionally, Charlie would make a shiva call to his patients. Sometimes I went along because I had a connection and he would walk in and at the shiva, which means there wasn't a happy ending. Most of Charlie's patients survived, by the way. But the ones Thank who, you for that, Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> but the ones who died, they had Charlie to the lavototam to, to lead them. And sometimes the way you help people die is worth more than how you help them live. Now wait, there's a very big part here. During the course of our living in Israel, my nieces and nephews all spend the year here. So that was wonderful because instead of leaving our family, we really got to know our family, including my friends whose kids came for the year. We became part of an Israeli group as well. So we both speak Hebrew fluently. And I think that our Aliyah has been very successful. We read the Hebrew papers every day. And we have Israeli friends. We do not just stay with Americans. I was going to say my nieces and nephews that spend the year with us got to see what it's like to live here, not just to study here, because so many of the kids that come for the year are very detached from Israel, unfortunately. And I think one of the main advantages was It was that Rebecca's my, Zionistic chicken soup chicken Friday soup, night. Charlie, so believe it or not, my sister's four children individually each made Aliyah, and therefore, my sister and brother-in-law made Aliyah, and that was a dream I never had. My dream was to live in Israel. My sister had different dreams. She wanted her big house. She wanted to retire in Miami. Sorry, Helen. They're now in Ranana, happy as can be, thanking me for bringing them here. So we've actually built our extended, we've, we've managed to get our, my extended family here, first cousins. And it's, it's a dream. It's better than my dream. Do you have this great job? I mean, you take care of patients, but... You even get to travel anywhere I want to go. I just pick up the phone or write an email and I get invited to talk. And, and thank God, uh, during the years, uh, Rebecca and I have really traveled around the world. Uh, we took sabbaticals not only in Israel, but uh, we were in Australia, uh, New Zealand. A, a great career, uh, taking care of patients, doing research, teaching, but also uh, traveling the world, lecturing, uh, being a visiting professor. And, seeing the world with your, your family. Today's gonna be a good day, no matter what comes down my way. Today's gonna be a good day, no matter what comes down my way. Cause I've got something burning inside And I've already made up my mind Today's gonna be a good day No matter what comes down my way Today's gonna be a good day No matter what comes down my way Cause I've got something burning inside And I've already made up my mind Today's the day I'm okay Sunshine clear but I also need to mention another big factor when I was growing up. My, my mother, being the immigrant and losing a lot of her family in the Holocaust, she spent most of her life searching for family, taking care of family, which included her mother. And for seven years, my bubby came and lived in my house. 
My brother gave up his bedroom. My mother gave up any career she would have had, and she literally took care of her mother until the day she was nifter with my father's support. And that was a, a lesson for me. My mother taught me the value of family, and family comes first, and what we do to family. And it was very much ingrained in me and my brother and sister, as is evident by the close relationships that we keep today. And that was one thing Charlie and I really had in common. And that's a very big deal when you're looking for a spouse, is to see the families they come from, because these are things that in your life, it's going to matter a lot. And um, we, we, we both agreed on that. We agree on a lot of things. We don't agree on other things, but that's I would true. say on the major, our major uh, elements, we really do, uh, we do think alike on that. So, but I have to stop you okay. because you learned the lesson well from your parents because no one could like you did for your parents. Rebecca's mom had Alzheimer's. I said, what are you talking Because I can't talk. So my mom, at my age, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And um, that's one of the reasons, actually, that, uh, that we brought them to Israel. It was, a very, uh, it was a very slow progression. At first, my, for a whole year, my father didn't even tell us that she had Alzheimer's. And how did he know? Because she got lost coming home from the beauty parlor that she went to for 20 years. And it wasn't easy having that burden of my parents. But on the other hand, I saw it as a schut because my children grew up seeing what kibbutz Ava'im was. My father started to decline. He had just mini strokes. He still was my father. He didn't go through the trauma of, of what, that we went through with my mother, but uh, we also had, we hired somebody, Epi, who became like my brother, I would say. But my father was part of our family. Every Friday night he came and he was with us. Charlie took him to shul, the highlight of his day. And we were very involved in in taking care of our parents uh, for so many years. Like Charlie's decisive, I am very indecisive. So that's Isn't why, that another that's reason another reason. That's the other reason I married him. I wanted someone who made the decisions. And interestingly, because my household, my mother made all the decisions and I didn't want that. So I wanted someone strong and he fit the bill. You see, you fit, you fit the bill for my husband, just not as my boyfriend. So, my God. Yeah. So, I decided also that I was going to allow Charlie to choose his own path, and that's been my philosophy in our marriage. I never said to Charlie, don't go to this conference, don't do this, stop working, did I? No. To tell you the truth, any of my accomplishments, uh, mm -hmm. she's very modest also. She's, I wouldn't have been able to do I any, agree. I anything agree I, I have accomplished without her support for taking care of the kids, for supporting me and helping me every way. So, uh, but anyway, so she has was, been an Azer Kinegdo, uh, hands down, and uh, everyone should be so lucky. Okay, I'll take that. When Nina was eight years old, um, she developed suddenly type 1 diabetes. And it was quite a shock. Uh, I knew nothing about the disease. And uh, we were hospitalized. I had to learn how to give shots. We had to start learning about it. And the only little problem was I was nine months pregnant at the time. So I was in the hospital with her, nine months pregnant, and we, we managed to get through the, the trauma of it. And, uh, and a week later, Shauna was born. And, um, and I was dealing with this, new, uh, with this new added well, kind of challenge, okay? And at the same time, of course, my housekeeper quit, and Helene flew down from flew down from New York to help me with a new baby, with the new disease, and, uh, and we somehow got through it. And I had made, a, I guess, a, a decision when Nina was diagnosed that, uh, that I was not going to treat this as something scary to her. I didn't want her to make her feel um, handicapped, even though it was a challenge. I didn't feel it was something that should be uh, harped on, but not kept secret either. So I think I made them pretty comfortable with, they're, they're not going to get away with anything, and they have to do what they have to do. And, and they can live a normal and life. And that they could live a normal life. And I remember feeling very different working with a kid with diabetes than I was before. 
my life really did change. And interestingly, I, I made an adjustment in my life. Instead of always thinking, Charlie's a very much a planner in the future, and that's part of his thing. And I, at that point in my life, decided to stay in the here and now. And it's very interesting because it was a very lucky decision of mine because, first of all, living in Israel, that's much more how it is. It's more today, not tomorrow. I find that's what the appeal to me to life in Israel is to appreciate what we have today. We don't know what tomorrow. Look at my mom, you know, for me to sit here worrying about the Alzheimer's every minute. Let me enjoy today. Let me make the most of today. You know, Hashem uh, gives us what we have to handle, and we do the best we can with it. And uh, I and try my a, best. And we have a very sweet family. We do have a very sweet family. about the things that I do, but I think the thing I actually do best is rationalize. And part of that idea of rationalizing is thinking positive. And there's two ways to go out through life. And I, from a very young age, I think it must be in our genes because my sister and brother are very similar, we're positive thinkers. You know, everyone was in camp. There's little things you can complain about in camp. And, and all my friends used to write all their complaints to their parents, and I wrote what was good about camp. So my, le my, my lesson is think positive. All right, the other thing was that I was very lucky, as the kids mentioned about dancing. Find something you love to do and then do it. Do it for yourself because so much of your life, you're busy doing work, you're doing for humanity, you're doing for your family, but don't forget yourself. And even though I had a busy life, making that niche for my dancing time was something that I always looked forward to when it was really hard for me to get through the day. I knew I would go out and dance at night when I had a lot of stress. I danced it and I felt ready to face tomorrow. Be loyal. I have friends from the age of eight. Stay with them, work hard, keeping friends and family, which I think I've done well and I'm so lucky to be surrounded by so many friends and so many family that's like friends. And um, don't take the easy way out, Ari. Remember what you told me? Ari asked me, Ma, why did you move to Israel? It was so much easier for you in your life. I had a living help. I had this huge house, big backyard, moved to a smaller house. Not so much help. I said, not always easy is better. And I, I, I do believe that even though I've had not a hard life, I think a good life, but it wasn't always the easiest. The other thing that I've learned, and this I only learned later in life, so this you have to listen to carefully, is don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that was one of my weaknesses, is that I thought I could do everything. I think my mother always pushed me, and sometimes you think you can do everything. Sometimes you just can't. And sometimes it's better to go out and ask for help, whether it's from a loved one, whether it's from a professional, and, or maybe your friends should tell you you should ask for help, but if you're struggling, go ask for help. You can't do everything by yourself. And of course, enjoy what you do in life. Um, it's more important than your titles. Find something that you love to do. I mean, I have so many freaking degrees that it's ridiculous. And what am I doing? I'm basically, officially a secretary. I'm not really a secretary, but I 
but I love what I do. I feel good about it. I feel like I'm contributing. I work with nice people. I enjoy going and, and feeling productive, and, and that's more important than anything. Of course, money wouldn't hurt, but it's never been it's never been our our uh, our our end all. Okay, um, everything in moderation. I believe in that in, 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 in everything, whether it's food, exercise, life, enjoyment, um, and smile. And that I got from my father. If you smile then um, the whole world smiles with you. And, um, and for my mother, I would say, my mother would say, get out of your house. Go out of your house, you'll learn something. I, I learned a lot from my parents, and I, I, I see in you that, that you've learned from me, some of you in your parenting skills, some of you in your life skills. And, and you know what? I did a really good job. <laughs> you sure did? Me agree. Okay. And it seems like you guys are very similar to you and Nina. I think mom uh, wanted to give messages, and, and so do I. Uh, not for you guys, I think, because uh, as mom said, uh, and from what you said, I think we did a pretty good job, and uh, I think a lot of the values that, that we had, uh, we've instilled in you. I see it in some of the grandkids too, but this video is for the future, and I don't know how many other generations there'll be who may not know who we are. Hopefully they'll still know who you are because you'll be their grandparents, but uh, it's for the future also. So there are a few things uh, I think that are important to both of us, I think important to the four of you, and that's come up uh, throughout the last few uh, hours uh, of us talking. And the first is the importance of family. Uh, I think if there is anything that's been important for the Sprung and Levine family, and I think uh, you've seen it, uh, I guess we've instilled it in you, and it comes from um, seeing our parents, our grandparents, and, and you the same, is, uh, and people talk about blood being thicker than water, but uh, there is something special about family, uh, being there for each other uh, during the good times, during the bad times, uh, and knowing there's always someone there who you can turn to and will help with you and I can just say there's nothing more rewarding than seeing uh, the, this past Pesach, seeing the grandkids uh, just playing with each other, with the Berman kids also um, and uh, it's just something you should uh, continue and it does continue and I'm, I'm sure it will continue for a long time. Uh, the other thing is to think about uh, the past uh, the chain, the future, uh, the importance of who you are, um, why you are the way you are, uh, your Jewish roots, uh, your Torah background, uh, to honor and respect and, and keep those Torah-based values uh, for you, for your family members, uh, and keep the chain really going from Moshe Rabbeinu down to our family and the continuation uh, of the chain. Uh, it's important to think about helping the world, making the place uh, a better place, the world a better place to live. Um, and it's important, I think, uh, in our own way, your mom and I have done that. I think in your own way, our children uh, are doing it, and hopefully our grandchildren and future generations uh, will continue doing it, uh, each in their own way. Uh, I think we've done it in our way. Um, I think our parents have done it also, but each of you have a different personality, uh, different skills, uh, and our grandkids and future generations will have their skills, uh, and each in their own way, whatever they can do to do something for Tikkun Olam to make, make things better. Now one of the advantages uh, all of you have, uh, besides having the gene for the diabetes, uh, <laughs> are other good genes uh, in terms of um, who you are, um, the work ethic, uh, what you can be, and uh, certainly you, you've doing your thing and doing it well, but, but for the grandkids and the future generations, uh, those genes are pretty good. Uh, and if you work hard, um, you should have the highest dreams that you want to fulfill, and I think anyone who was in this family, I think most anyone anywhere, but certainly with the gene pool we have, also from the in-laws, um, 
I think everyone and all, all the grandkids uh, should always dream high, dream big, and anything you want to become, you certainly can become. And don't think twice about it. And remember, as we've heard consistently, no doesn't necessarily mean no, and you, you can you can really do anything. Persistence. And persistence, yes. Um, be serious, I think, as a physician. Uh, I'm very serious. I live with life and death many times. Uh, but also, don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, be aware of life uh, and being serious. There's a time for that. But having fun uh, and making the most out of uh, enjoying whatever you do. And as Grandma really had said, uh, you should find something that makes you happy. And for the grandkids, uh, it's not all about money. It, it's having a job that makes you happy. Um, and I love what I do. And as I've said many times, I really haven't worked a day in my life because I just love what I'm doing. And hopefully everyone will be able to do the same thing. And finally, probably the most important uh, thing for our future generations is how to pick out a spouse, which is not so easy. I think uh, I've been the most lucky in terms of uh, picking your mom. It wasn't luck. <laughs> it's per persistent. persistent. <laughs> and Hashem's help for sure. Uh, but I think there are certain things you can look for, and this is for the future generations, because I think our kids have done very well, and I'm certainly Shana will also uh, do well. I think it's important when you're looking at someone, you have to look at the family, uh, look at the family values, and I think you've heard uh, about our family, the Levines and the Sprungs, having similar values, uh, things that are important for them in terms of Torah, in terms of uh, materialism, or not being so materialistic, uh, and some of uh, certainly the uh, other uh, family members who've married in, I mean, a lot of people have the same values. So I think in looking for people, look, look at your potential spouse's uh, parents. Uh, they may be very much like them. They may not be, but uh, think about that. But mainly the values you should think of. You'll have enough challenges in life uh, to make things uh, difficult, but looking at the various values can make the bumps in the road that go on through life a lot easier to handle when you're coming really from the same place. But if I think of all the things I, I thought of looking at uh, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, 46 years. There are a lot of things I thought of then that were important, and I, I think they were important, but it's it's you have no idea. <laughs> you really don't. So, so you gotta look for those values. That's where the mazel comes in. That's right. where the mazel, and, and take the plunge. And but the beauty for me has been the fact that vayikach et rivka et rivka v'tehilah lisha v'yah. And then comes vayikach. So the love really for our relationship, I thought came before, but it really is connected. Thank you very much for saying it. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, that was dramatic. <laughs> uh.